Yes, my progression, or better, my return to XFCE, has been eye-opening, an experience that made me think, what have I been missing all these years? The last time I used XFCE as my main desktop was many years ago. After a long time on GNOME and six months on KDE, I finally made the big move. And above all, I was surprised, almost shocked, by the experience I had with my 2019 Surface Go 2 with just 4GB of RAM. It was a machine on which I had to keep Windows because I needed to run proprietary medical software, damn them, that is unavailable for both Linux and Mac OS. But since work gave me a brand new laptop with Windows 11, brand new, and it can barely boot, I was finally able to install XFCE and Void on the Surface Go 2. And as many already know, it was a revelation. I even went on holiday with it, and even while on holiday I was able to create videos with Shotcut. Incredible, right? A machine that was practically dead. After coming back home, I switched back to my main system, and I started missing XFCE. I felt that something in my experience was lacking, both with KDE and GNOME. And so, since Void ships with XFCE, I decided to remove all impurities and create a pure XFCE-based distro. And I assure you, as you saw in my video, XFCE, the latest, nicest desktop, I'm not just satisfied, I'm beyond that. I'm enlightened and genuinely happy with my experience, because XFCE, in the end, gives me everything I want. Now, one of XFCE's so-called problems is that at first glance it may appear minimalistic, not outdated, but minimalistic. Yet, with the right customizations, it can transform into something extraordinary. Today I want to share my configuration, because I believe it's one of the most beautiful ever seen on XFCE, and the process itself can show you aspects of the desktop that you may not know. This customization was inspired by a beautiful video from a creator who bought an old ThinkPad and made Void run on it. I think it's one of the best videos on YouTube, both for the editing and the video quality, and for the technical content and demonstrated experience. Well, I take this opportunity to mention and thank him, since he released his video under Creative Commons, and it's literally a treasure for everyone. Especially for creators who want to make videos with shareable content, which is often very hard to find. Thank you again. I use his footage every time I can, and those shots of Void and that ThinkPad are fantastic. Let's go back to his configuration, which is based on Orca's Dark Compact Theme, White Sur Icon Theme, which replicates Mac OS, a bottom dock. Well, the entire challenge in replicating this configuration was the dock. I tried to replicate it using XFCE's native panel plugin, but obviously, even editing the config file and trying all sorts of hacks to get rounded corners, I couldn't make it work. I tried Cairo Dock and it was hell, because I thought the look I wanted was a specific theme for Cairo Dock, and I wouldn't have used it anyway, because it's almost unusable, slow, buggy, and unreliable. Then, not giving up, and knowing that if he managed to do it, then there must be another dock available for XFCE, I finally reached the right solution. Plank. Plank does one very simple thing, it works. It doesn't have a million functions. It doesn't have complicated configuration panels. It's very simple and I love it. Even if, to be honest, elementary OS from which Plank originates is not really my kind of project. Returning to the theme configuration, we need to install Orcus. Installing it via terminal is very simple. Clone the repository with this command. Enter the theme folder. Make the script executable. And then install the theme with the Orcus theme has many configurations, but to accurately replicate the customization we want, it's necessary to use these parameters. Of course, each of you can adjust them to your personal taste. The theme offers many variants and it's really well made. Even though it's primarily designed for GNOME, it works more than decently on XFCE. The icons are available here, you just download the theme and add it directly from the XFCE icon selector. And Plank is in the void repositories and I believe in almost every distro. I didn't want a computer that replicated macOS exactly. I don't like clones. Honestly, all macOS icons in a Linux desktop irritate me. So I chose a hybrid path because I found this icon theme on XFCE Look, which I consider one of the best icon themes ever created for Linux. It's called Boston. I find it elegant, refined, not pompous. And as declared on the project's GitHub, it's a work based on quality rather than quantity. 
essentially a set of folder and mimetype icons, nothing more. For the rest, I kept XFCE's default icons while applying a few changes. For example, the terminal icon is identical to the one on macOS. Changing icons is very simple. Right-click Properties, choose Icon, done. Yes, it's meticulous work, but it pays off if you want to customize just a few icons. Mine is still a work in progress, but time is on my side since I don't plan to change distro or desktop environment anymore. This will be my main system for years. Whenever my distro hopping phases settle, I tend to stick with a distribution for decades. I started with Slackware, then Debian, then the great early Ubuntu dream, then back to Debian in 2009, and now Void. So now, back to customization. I made some changes to the dock by adding the XFCE application finder as a launcher. I personally find it beautiful as a menu. In fact, I use it as my main menu. To do this, simply, one, move the icon from the menu to the desktop, two, drag it into Plank. This tool offers a series of customizations you can find here, making it even more versatile with additional themes. But I went even further. I wanted the Compiz Expo effect easily accessible so I could move quickly between virtual desktops. So I created a launcher that triggers a Compiz plugin. I installed Xdo Tool. Xdo Tool is a small command line tool that lets you control the mouse, keyboard, and windows through automated commands, essentially simulating key presses, mouse movements, clicks, and window interactions as if you were doing them manually. It's one of the most powerful tools for creating custom shortcuts, automating workflows, triggering window manager functions, and graphical effects that typically have no dedicated command. For example, with XDO tool, you can simulate Super Q to open Compass Expo, rotate the 3D cube with Control Alt Right, switch between windows or desktops, trigger animations or effects, control applications via script. In short, XDO tool lets you turn any key combination into a command, letting you trigger effects or plugins that have no terminal interface. I created a launcher on the desktop, added the XDO tool command to trigger Expo, assigned it an icon, and moved it to the dock. It's immediate, modern, and anyone can insert whatever command they use most. To use it, you need to install Emerald and its theme manager. I configured a dark style, with all controls on the left, inspired by macOS, but without trying to copy it. For the panel, remember to manually set a dark color, because with the Orcus theme, the black is slightly less black, more nuanced or semi-transparent depending on the settings. The wallpapers I use are part of a fantastic collection created specifically for Void Linux, more than a hundred wallpapers dedicated to the distribution. But now I'm using this one, which I modified myself, originally created by Andrea Palumbo, an excellent Italian YouTuber who manages to speak to a broad audience about Linux and mainly covers hardware and computer restoration. It's a shame he publishes in Italian. I'm convinced he would be extremely successful in English. He's incredibly skilled and clear in his explanations. Returning to wallpapers, of course, if you use Zorin OS, you can always pay $50 and they'll give you a wallpaper wrapped in a fancy package with a thank you so much label on it. Sorry for the parentheses, but I wanted to open a brief aside. This isn't about being against capitalism, as someone suggested. It's about being against dishonesty. Because there is a widespread culture of dishonesty that makes morally acceptable practices that are indeed legal, but also objectively disgusting. For me, the point is transparency, honesty, a model consistent with an ethic that, in the open source world, should revolve around collaboration, openness, and sharing. And in Zorin, I simply do not see this. Parentheses closed. Now back to us. For fonts, you can install Apple's San Francisco Pro. They are beautiful, but since I try to use only free software, I prefer not to, and continue customizing with what I have. For example, the Cantarell font. To change it, just go to the font section in the XFCE settings. Thunar, as well as the sidebar, is also fully customizable. You can change the icon size by going to Thunar, Edit, Preferences, Side Pane, and selecting the size you prefer. You can also decide whether to use symbolic icons, depending on the theme you have selected. A small detail, to maintain consistency with the version you see, you need to free the XFCE panel from the Orcus theme and give it a black background manually.
Configured like this, XFCE becomes a small gem, modern, elegant, even at the level of GNOME and KDE. By playing with settings, I'm convinced you can achieve any look, even the most unimaginable. And during this customization experience, I realized something. There is no true reference website that collects the best projects. XFCE look is outdated. It would be wonderful to have a site where every user can upload their complete configuration, theme, icons, wallpaper, hacks, with instructions to replicate it, and maybe with a voting system to build a ranking of the best setups. It would be extremely useful because material exists, there's lots of it, but finding it is often hard and time consuming. With a single click, XFCE can even turn into this. Yes, exactly. It can go back 30 years and transform into Windows 95. And that's another theme I love and used a lot. But that's another story, and I'll reserve it for another video, maybe the five best XCE themes. I hope my customization, inspired by the creator I mentioned, was enjoyable for you. Thank you for watching, and may Linux be with you.